right, everybody. Welcome to The Independent Mouth. I am your host, Anthony. Today, we have got another show. No video today. I do apologize. Too crazy of a day. Way too crazy. I wanted to get this uploaded as quickly as possible. Um, it, that's the reason why. Uh, so, because I'm not, I'm only going to be here for a short period of time uh, as we get this episode out. But please, 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 jam-packed episode, ton of information. Get ready. Hold on to your nips. It's about to go down with all the info that we got here, okay? So, once again, we always want to thank Blinky Minky Blankets. Use the code word, the mouth, at BlinkyMinkyBlankets.com. Go to BlinkyMinkyBlankets.com. Get your custom blanket made. Anything you want on it, just talk with Michelle, and you will get it done. Okay, so check this out here. Let's start here. For months and months and months, forever, they talked about this laptop. We told you. Six months, eight months, nine months down the road, that truth always comes out. I don't see how this administration survives uh, the laptop story. It's not going anywhere. There is a grand jury. They are subpoenaing for information. They are digging and looking into everything. And guess what? Joe Biden is the big guy. 10% to the big guy. Okay. Text message, external text messages found on Hunter Biden's laptop reveal conversations between members of the Biden family referring to a sexually inappropriate relationship between Hunter and his underage niece. Now, forget the demons that the guy has. It's, it's not about his sexual exploits. It's not about drug addiction. It's not about any of that stuff. It's totally about the compromising position it puts his father, who was vice president at the time, and now potato in charge uh, over here. So that's the issue that we're running into. Okay, Forget the other stuff. The other stuff is just political fodder and newsworthy information. That's it. That's all it is. While excerpts of these text messages have been available since 2020, last week, the New York Times officially confirmed okay, that the laptop belonging to the president's son or potato in charge's son is authentic. The development came just one day after Joe Biden made what at the time appeared to be an unprovoked speech okay, against people being blackmailed with self-shot or voluntary, uh, voluntary self-shot images showing them in compromising positions. Why would he go out there and do it? Remember, get ahead of the story, build your narrative. That's all they're trying to do. Hunter Biden is a PR nightmare. Not only is he a PR nightmare, he's a logistics nightmare. He is a security nightmare. That's what this is for them. And they've been hiding it for a long time. Here's the sad part. The media, like we've always said, hid all of this, hid everything just so Trump couldn't win. Or did he? Now, I mean, that's, that's just part A of the conversation to be had here. The more and more that we look at this, the more and more we go down this route, then the more you find out the truth. The laptop is real. It always has been real. Think about all the information that came out where they tried to discredit uh, the pawn shop guy, the computer repair guy. They tried to, to take all this stuff away. All the messages, 10% for the big guy, gave him half my salary, blah, 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 blah. Remember, Biden said he didn't know anything about his son's business dealings, a picture of him and like Saudi Arabian, right? And and <laughs> all these uh, Middle East individuals, right? High profile people, but he knew nothing about it. It was all a lie. Okay. So just once again, two, two levels, two tier levels of justice that take place. For those people out there, okay. That are looking or, or have student debt. Join the club. A lot of people got student debt. It looks like student debt is being delayed again until August. The question I have is, are they going to cancel it? It's delayed one more time. It was delayed until the end of January. It was delayed until like March. Then it was delayed again now until August. Now, if you can't pay your student debt, you shouldn't have taken it in the first place. But this goes back to predatory lending and different things that I've spoken about pre previously on the show. Is school really worth it for people? Are they able to pay back these debts? Or does this just give them interest rates for years and years to come and that's how they survive? That's a real question. How many people are actually using their degree? How many people have used their degree? 
how many people have actually seen an, seen an increase or an increase in quality of life, not just payment, quality of life, due to that degree? Those are the questions we need to be asking. Now, on shows that we had last week and, and um, over the last two weeks, we heard DeSantis, for example, and other places really implementing kids learning how to file their taxes, understanding money management, going through classes like that. Some schools, you know, when I was going through and everything else, actually did those things. Kids just didn't take them up. Why do I need it? Right? Well, now it's becoming ever more apparent that they do need to understand. I was taught at a young age how to balance a checkbook. I was taught at a young age, obviously, you need more coming in than what you spend, right? I mean, that's pretty simple. But ultimately, kids need to be taught better in school, not about gender, not about race. Teach them mathematics. Teach them about the history of the country. Teach them those things that actually make them better and allow for them to be free-thinking individuals as adults. Now, CodeMonkey and Twitter, this is something that I thought was pretty interesting because obviously people have been banned. You have Trump, you got CodeMonkey, you got all these people. Anybody who said anything about the election, anybody who said anything about, uh, you know, different branches of government, they got, they got expelled, right? They were taken off. Well, CodeMonkey says this about Elon Musk because we all understand Elon Musk bought a huge, 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 huge stake in Twitter. And in that stake in Twitter of him getting it now, they also put him on the board of directors. That board of directors seat is extremely important. Code Monkey says this, I don't agree with Elon Musk on certain on some things. That being said, he has been a fierce defender of free speech. His stake in Twitter and appointment to the board will result in many previously banned accounts being fully restored, President Trump and myself among them. This has sent a massive message to tech companies. If you infringe on free speech, activist investors, and the free market will force you to recant it. This is a major win for free speech. And then you have Jack Dorsey, who was the CEO. He's completely out of the picture uh, in the next 30 days, I believe. Twitter founder Jack Dorsey blames himself partially for centralizing discovery and identity into corporations. He regrets it. Really damaged the internet. The days of unset IRC, the web, even mail with PGP were amazing, he added. Now, that's a stark admission coming from somebody who so heavy into Bitcoin, right? Because think about it. He's so heavy into digital currency, he has to recant what he said. Digital currency, Bitcoin, all of that is the quintessential move to get away from centralized banking. To get away and give you your anonymity back. To give you your freedom. So how does he go from one that's censoring an active president of the United States to another without making a statement? He had to make the statement. There was no way around it. So that's where people don't get that information. They don't understand it. And I think that that's extremely important for people to get. Without that tie-in... People will be like, well, he's just making a statement. Oh, okay, he feels bad. Ooh, okay, we, we forgive Jack Dorsey. Um, that's not the case. He's doing it because he's trying to make money off of another way, and he won't have the same support that he did for Twitter unless he does this. $30,000 a month is being paid to hole up Hunter Biden in a mansion in Malibu. That's a good place for your tax dollars. He's under criminal investigation. There's a grand jury investigating everything that Hunter Biden's done with his laptop and communications, but we're spending $30,000 a month to put him in a mansion in Malibu, so he's protected. If that's not the biggest crock, I don't know what is. 30 grand. Do you know what I could do with 30 grand a month? Do you know what most people could do with 30 grand a month? Do you know what most people could do with two or three grand a month? 30. To hold up a crackhead pedophile. Who happens to be the son of the potato in charge. And a person who's dedicated their life 50 years into politics and flip-flopping every single day that he walks through the doors and the halls of Congress. 
Now, you had Obama coming in because they got the midterms. And he wants to be the shiny new object, right, that gets everybody on board, support the potato in charge. He referred to Biden as the vice president. And then jokes and says it was all a setup. Biden looked like the grandpa who people go over, give a kiss, and then go talk to everybody else. He looked like the kid who was very unpopular at school. That's what he looked like. It was pretty sad. It was pretty gross. It was disgusting. The entire thing was a sham. We all know that potato ain't making real serious decisions. Bottom line. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson says he thinks that biological males should not be competing in female sporting events. Mr. Progressive over there coming out and saying something, huh? I mean, that's pretty insane. Pretty insane. And I think when the more and more that we get into this and the more and more that we figure out what is happening, what's been going on, I think you're starting to realize that that quote unquote majority of trans gay, like nobody cares if they're trans or they're gay, but there needs to be baselines in there. You can't just go put on a wig as a male and go, Hey, I'm going to go jump in a swimming pool with females doesn't work like that. Biologically, you're still different. Put on a wig and go compete against the men. All for it. All for it if you do that, but you won't. But you won't. Okay? And that's my take on that. It's wrong. It shouldn't be done. It should never be done. Biden wrote a college recommendation letter for the son of a Chinese executive with links to Biden's son, Hunter, despite despite the president repeatedly denying ever speaking with his offspring about his business interests. Emails reveal, according to Fox News. Remember what we said. Everything that comes out of his mouth is a lie. An absolute lie. Okay? Now, I'm going to read something from Brian uh, Cates. He's always usually come out with some really good information. Um, I don't believe everything that he says, not even close. But I like this little timeline that he put together. And I've been doing timelines lately because I think it is extremely important to be reminded of where things came from and where they are now. We knew about the election stuff, but then you look and the amount of money was like $45 million that Zuckerberg uh, put into the 2020 election, and it breaks down how much sta- you know goes to each state. When you talk about COVID, the numbers per hospital, per state, and how much they got per patient uh, to put people in, those numbers are staggering. You can find that online. The Pfizer docs, the dump took place. They were supposed to have... Uh, increases in staff as as early as June 2021, and they failed to meet that re- uh, requirement. Therefore, the documents have been dumped, okay? And it literally says in the documentation that they failed to accurately report statistics. Well, don't you think that's something... I mean, isn't that something important? Isn't that something that's kind of necessary to the narrative and the story? Isn't that something that people want to hear? Seems really odd. Right? Really odd. But let's go through it. None of this is supposed to be happening. Right? We'll get to it. They weren't supposed to lift the lockdowns and mask uh, vaccine mandates. Omicron made them do that. Omicron was herd immunity. That's why it destroyed all of it. We were supposed to still be sitting here going through that same fear cycle. Putin wasn't supposed to invade Ukraine and expose the literal Nazis and biolabs there to the world. More and more keeps coming out. White armbands, blue armbands. Look it up yourself. Biolabs are real. Our own government has said they're real. Do we want to still argue about that? I don't think so. Durham isn't supposed to be coming uh, and zeroing right in on Hillary Clinton and her team at her uh, campaign headquarters at Perkins Coie and Fusion GPS. She was supposed to try and make another run for it. That's dead. Dead in the water. 
She also can't understand why Biden's ratings are so low. Gee, I don't know. When everything you were told from the beginning is completely wiped out, all of that was a lie. I can totally understand why that is. They're not supposed to be having suddenly reversed themselves on the Biden crime family investigation, frantically trying to get their captive audience up to speed before what's coming arrives. Media is doing that a lot. People weren't supposed to be awakened to this fact. Right? That plan of the Great Reset. You heard Macron, Trudeau, many people talking about it. Biden just talking about it overseas. He's such an idiot. But that reset's dead. The boundaries are shifting and the lines are being redrawn. Nations are realigning. If you look, a lot of places are saying, well, if you're going to do this, then that counts as this. And we're going to reverse ourselves on this. And you're going to start to see a lot of that. Whereas instead of everybody filing in single lines, you're going to see every two, three people start to turn and change their course and go back. It's too late to stop it. That is true. Now, let's get on to to Jackson, uh, the Supreme Court nomination, because it's at a deadlock at the, uh, the, the Senate Security Committee. Um, it's deadlocked. Okay. Absolutely deadlocked. Now let's go over a couple things. Just keep in mind in the eight child porn cases that came before the court, former DC district court judge Kentaji Brown Jackson heard horrifying details of Sada, uh, torture of young kids, including infants and toddlers yet challenged the disturbing evidence presented by prosecutors, and disregarded their prison recommendations to give the lightest possible punishments in each case, according to transcripts of sentencing hearings attained by the Post. And this is by the New York Post. And you can see all the stories there, so please go ahead and read it. In some cases, she even apologized to some of the kiddie porn perverts for having to follow the statutes, which she called substantially flawed. What's flawed in pedophilia? Can somebody please explain that to me? I'll sit and listen. I won't say a word. I won't raise my hand. I'll make sure I go to the bathroom before we get there. Over and over, the records reveal Jackson made excuses for the sex fiends, criminal behavior, and cut them slack in defiance of investigators and prosecutors, and sometimes even probation officers serving her court, who argued for tougher sentences because the cases were particularly egregious or the defendants weren't remorseful. The worst part of that is the last three words. Defendants weren't remorseful. What does that tell you about her, her character, and her judgment? It's disgusting. She's not a judge. She's an activist with a collar. She is disgusting. Anybody who says that, I don't care. Hate me, love me, whatever you want. I'm not changing my stance on that. It's disgusting. Defense Secretary Austin makes a statement as Matt Gates goes at him for what he's doing inside of Ukraine. The fact that you're embarrassed by your country, I'm sorry for that. He says it to Matt Gates. This is a heated exchange about Ukraine and everything else. Gates responds, I'm embarrassed by your leadership. I'm not embarrassed for my country. It's disgraceful that you would sit here and conflate your failures with those of uninformed service members. Ukraine could have been avoided. Or could it? But from a U.S. standpoint and us being able to get ahead of the story and actually supplying and and handling it the right way, we could have, except for failure in leadership. Now, in California, this is pretty interesting. Special election to replace California GOP Rep. Nunes. No Democrat or Republican got enough votes. You think California's privy? I think they are. California is definitely privy. California is so privy that they no longer even want to go voting because the candidates are trash. Now... To end the show on a great note, right? And we'll be back this weekend. Um, 
and uh, we'll put together something a, a little bit more fun, okay? If not this weekend, it'll be uh, next week for the show. Because we're going to get back to making everybody laugh. Like I said, I wanted to get all the information in as quickly as I possibly could. This day was getting away from me very quickly. Um, But this last one is great. Encounters with UFOs have reportedly left unaccounted for pregnancies and radiation burns. A newly declassified Pentagon report claims. So we have alien babies. Now, the radiation burns could be from the technology, people getting too close to weapons, whatever the case is. Maybe somebody, you know, went and grabbed the alien's butt and he turned around and shocked them, right? Like, all I keep thinking about is like men in black. That's all I think about whenever I hear this. Also, since I brought up men in black, if you follow Jada Pickett Smith, you're a moron. I just wanted to put that out there. She is a gaslighting fool. She is unintellectual okay she is without a doubt a disgusting and toxic human being she laughed as will smith slapped chris rock and then puts out a statement i'm here for all the healing and then puts out a statement i told will he was wrong for slapping chris and i'm not a wallflower or a prize to be won you don't need to smack somebody because of me. Listen, first of all, she's got the best looking head of hair for somebody who has alopecia I've ever seen in my entire life. That's number one. Don't know if she's got it or not. Don't care. Number two, she's the one who gave him the stink eye. She's the one out there making him look like a fool publicly and putting all their business out in the public and making him react. Now, he needs to handle his own business and control that. Because he's in control of his his actions and how he reacts to those things. But she is a gaslighting driving force who's toxic and a disgusting human being. And there I said my piece. Now, as we build up for the next show, we will be a lot more animated. We will have more fun. I will make everybody laugh. I know those are the shows that everybody loves. So I will make sure to put it together. I will make sure to get you guys going and rocking and rolling. Okay, But as for right now, I'm sorry. Don't need to apologize, but I'm going to and just tell you the next shows will be a lot more fun. I'll do it on video so you can see the facial expressions in which everybody loves. Okay. And with that being said, I want to thank everybody. Please donate to the show when you get a chance. You can go to the independententertainmentnetwork.com. You can donate to the show. You can send an email. You can contact me directly. Please go subscribe or donate to the show. And always remember, blinkyminkyblankets.com use your code the mouth and get your favorite blanket today folks i want to thank you so much for listening thank you for all the love and support i love you and thank you for everything once again my name is anthony and you've been listening to the independent mouth you folks have a great day and we'll see you at the next show